What's up guys, Nick Drew here, and today I wanna to share with you 13 things that Hannah and I have cut from our budget without making huge sacrifices. Over the past four years of marriage, we've really started to hone in on what things matter to us and what things don't. And I hope that by sharing these things with you, you'll be able to think of something you could cut that in the long run, you won't miss at all. All right, before I get into number one, I do wanna say that these are just things that we've cut. You may watch this video and think that you wanna keep all of these things, or you may watch it and think that you don't have any desire to ever spend on that stuff and don't understand why we did in the first place. Either way is fine. The point of this video is just to get you to think about things that you can cut without really affecting your overall happiness. If you've seen some of my other videos, you know that I call these sorta kinda wants, not really wants, and we want you spending on your really wants. So with that said, let's jump in and hear the first sorta what kind of want that we've cut. Number one, buying less prepped food from Sam's and Costco. When Hannah and I first got married, we didn't have time to be cooking and cleaning. We practically lived off the stuff in that prepped Costco and Sam's refrigerated section for years. While we do still use these when people come over for dinner, of course, we put these in a regular dish when they're done so they look homemade we don't really buy these anymore for us. Ultimately, these dishes are just too expensive to be eating on a regular basis, and we've learned how to cook and make things that cost a lot less money and still don't require a massive amount of work. All right, number two is buying gifts for people. Okay, so we haven't completely cut out gift giving. We love gift giving to our friends and family, but we have significantly cut down our cost of giving gifts by simply just switching up the timeline and how we buy them. Instead of waiting to buy gifts for Christmas right at the very last minute or buying gifts for birthdays at the very last minute, we've looked at our past year spending on gifts and figured out kind of a rough estimate of how much we need on a monthly basis for all of our gift giving. This allows us to buy gifts as we come across them and as we find them on sale. Overall, this has helped us decrease our gift spending and have a lot more fun buying gifts for people because we get to actually think about what they want and have time instead of running around at the last minute to buy it. Okay, number three, napkins and tissues. Now, I'm not sure if you've noticed, but millennials are accused of killing a lot of different industries and products just because we like other things than previous generations. Who knew that one generation and the things that they like could be different slightly than another generation and the things that they like? Because that's never happened before. But I digress. And one of the many things that my generation has been accused of killing is the napkin. And Han and I definitely fall into that group. We don't buy napkins at all and very rarely buy tissues. We use paper towels and then regular reusable water washable towels for everything. Have a mess, paper towel. Need to wipe your face off, paper towel. Backyard barbecue, paper towel. Nice dinner at home, paper towel. Blow your nose, paper towel. They're cheap and they do more than one job. What more do you need? Okay, number four is monthly haircuts. Now you probably haven't noticed because I wear hats a lot, but I have a ton of hair. It's super thick, it grows crazy fast. And actually I got 10 inches cut off of this just a few months ago. I know. It's ridiculous, isn't it? See, to keep the same hairstyle, I have to get it cut like every four weeks. Even six weeks is really pushing it. And unfortunately, even some of the cheapest places tend to run me 18 to $20. And if I go to some of the nice places that will do my beard too, then I'm looking at like 35 or 40 bucks. So recently, I've started getting my hair really thinned out and cut pretty short each time I go and then letting it grow out in between haircuts. This lets me go as much as like 10 or 12 weeks without getting another haircut, especially because I do wear hats all the time. Number five is drinks in. Now I know that on a dollar per ounce basis, drinks out are always going to be way more expensive than buying drinks in. But for us these days, we just don't drink all that much anyways, whether it's out or in. However, we used to pick up a case of Mike's Hard Lemonade whenever we would make a Costco trip. Oh yeah that hard lemonade. It is really cheap, but as we started getting more budget conscious, we realized that drinking at home just really didn't do all that much for us. And I don't care how cheap you're going or where you're getting it from, alcohol still gets really expensive pretty fast. These days, we'll get a beer or a glass of wine out maybe once a month, sometimes every other month, depending on if it's a special occasion or if we're going out with friends. Other than that, it's water for me and crystal light water for Hannah. And that keeps us perfectly happy. But speaking of things that we've cut while we're at home, number six is ice cream at home. Now again, I know that when you buy the gallon of ice cream at Walmart versus buying it out on like a dollar per spoonful basis, it's more expensive. But here's the problem. If we have ice cream in the freezer, we will eat it, period. I literally have no self-discipline when it comes to ice cream in the house. After dinner, if there's ice cream in the freezer, you better believe that I'm getting some. I end up eating ice cream almost every single night, and then wow, we're out of ice cream again. I guess we better get some when we go back to the store. That's the cycle we went through over and over again for quite a while. I gained a lot of weight, and we spent a lot of money on ice cream. These days, we do not buy ice cream to eat at home. We will go out and have ice cream on a special occasion, and it's a real treat to do that. But this doesn't happen often, and in the long run, it's saving us 
us a ton of money and calories. Number seven, cutting out restaurants and replacing them with coffee shops. Now, if you've seen my video on questioning everything, I'll link it above, you already know this story. When Hannah and I really started to question why we liked eating out so much, we realized that for us, maybe 10 to 20% of the time was actually about the food, but the vast majority of the time was really just to get out. It was about the atmosphere, it was about the setting, it was about having fun away from the airstream. We really don't care that much about the food. Recently, we have significantly cut down the amount of times we go out to eat and instead increase the amount of coffee shops that we go visit. By doing this, we can afford to go out a lot more and we still get the main thing that we cared about anyways, which is just getting out. Plus, you get way more time for the dollars that you're spending because it's socially acceptable for you to hang out or read or talk in a coffee shop for three to four hours when you can't really do that in a restaurant. But let's keep talking about food while we're on a roll here and get to number eight, which is fast food while traveling. Now, obviously, with our lifestyle of living on the road full time, we travel a lot. If you're like us, travel days can get hectic. And the easiest thing to do is to just simply grab fast food whenever you get hungry. But we started to notice that we were spending a lot of money on McDonald's, Wendy's, Subway and Pilot and we weren't even getting the real experience that we care about when we spend money to go eat out. We were simply going out of convenience. Now recently we've gotten way better about prepping food either the night before or the morning of for a travel day so that we don't have to spend money on the road. It's easy to make a few sandwiches the night before and then pack snacks like peanuts and pepperonis and cheese sticks to help get us through the day. Lastly when we do eat out on the road we've gotten much more diligent about filling out those stupid little surveys from McDonald's so that you can get a buy one get one on your receipt and next time you go. You're not going to become a millionaire doing this, but hey, it takes five minutes, you're in the car anyways, and a free cheeseburger never hurt nobody. All right, enough of this food business. Let's flip to the other side of the spectrum. Number nine, gym memberships. Now, we have spent a lot of money on gyms over the years. YMCA, then Planet Fitness, then on and off and on and off and on and off. And ultimately, you know what we figured out? We're lazy. Now, this may sound weird. I'm not actually that lazy when it comes to the working out aspect of things. I'm lazy when it comes to getting in the car and driving to the gym. That's the part I hate the most. That's the part that feels like a complete waste of time. Our most recent Planet Fitness membership we got because there was one literally right beside where Hannah worked at the time, and so it was easy for us to just meet there after work. But now that she works with me full time, Planet Fitness is never on the way. Even when it was literally half a mile from where we were parked for three months earlier this year, we didn't go. Basically, we need to be able to lace up our shoes, walk out the Airstream door, and start working out. And if that can't happen, then we're not gonna do it. So we quit the gym, recently bought a workout program guide book on Amazon called The Body Boss, and we've been going through that, and it's been going really, really well. We just work out right outside the Airstream. Now, I know it's gonna be tough when the winter months roll around, and so you'll have to check in with me then, and see how it's going, but for now, it's going great. We've never stuck with a workout program or actually working out consistently for this long, ever. Over the long term, I think we're gonna save quite a bit of money by not having the gym membership and just buying a new workout program or, or book on Amazon every six months or so. Okay, the 10th thing we've cut is souvenir spending. Now, again, this isn't one that we've cut out all the way, but we've significantly decreased it, and actually, this has probably been the hardest one for us to do. When we first got married we would try to go visit a new city or, or go to a new place yeah you know once or twice a year and we would always try and get something to remember the trip by maybe it was a hat for me or a t-shirt or a hoodie for hannah or a coffee mug that we can both share now that we live on the road it's ridiculous to think that we can get something or afford to get something at every new place that we go but the thing is that having something to remember these trips by is something that we really like doing it's it's one thing that we really like to spend money on so these days we do still buy something when we travel but it's not a given that we're going to buy something at every new place and we really spend a lot of time thinking about it on the front end of what places we most want to have something to remember them by. Ultimately, we've come to grips with the fact that it's okay to do without. Hannah recently read a book called The Life-Changing Magic of Tidying Up, and in it, the author has a quote that we, we both really liked. She said, life becomes a lot easier when you know that things will still work out even if you're lacking something. And there's a lot of truth to that. Okay, number 11, amusement parks. Okay, now this was another hard one for us. We really, really like roller coasters and we've made some great memories at amusement parks, but I don't know if you've checked the prices on these things lately, but whew, they're ridiculous. Two years ago, Hannah was living in Columbus, Ohio for 10 weeks, and so I was going up there a lot on the weekends, and so we planned to go to Cedar Point, which is a big roller coaster theme park in Ohio. As we started looking and pricing it out, things started getting really expensive really fast. I forget the exact prices, but I remember starting to calculate the price per ride once you figured in all the wait times that I was reading about online. Then when you started thinking about the fact that most rides are only two to three minutes, and you factor in a price per second, 
and it just didn't make any sense anymore. So we didn't go. In fact, this whole thing just happened again two weeks ago. Ken and I are currently visiting family in Tennessee, but we're on our way to a financial conference in a week and a half down in Orlando. So of course we thought we might swing by the Harry Potter world while we're there. Mm, I don't know if you know this, but Harry Potter world is not just Harry Potter world. There's two Harry Potter worlds. Universal's decided it's a good idea to split the park up into two different locations. So you gotta pay for both. In order to do both parks adequately, we were gonna need two days. Then you start factoring in the fast pass so that you can actually ride the rides because evidently Universal is known for having really long lines. By the time you navigate this purposefully confusing website, we figured out that those two days at these parks were gonna cost us like 560 bucks just for the tickets. We'd also need to factor in parking passes, food inside the park since you're not allowed to pack anything in and bring it yourself, and taxes. Long story short, this two day amusement park thing started looking like it was going to be pushing $800 and that's just not worth it to us. We're currently saving money for a tandem kayak that we'll be able to buy once and use for years to come and that $800 could nearly buy that thing. Needless to say, we are not going to Harry Potter World and I suspect we aren't going to be going to any amusement parks in the near future with prices like that. All right, number 12, hotels when traveling between places. Okay, now this is one that is, uh, is not going to be for everybody, but these days Hannah and I rarely stay in hotels. Now, of course, you can do the Airbnb B&B thing, but we like to go even cheaper than that. Walmarts. This is super easy when we're in the Airstream, right? Most Walmarts are really happy to let RVers stay there overnight, especially when you're a good customer and come in and buy a few groceries that you need. But we do this even when we're not in the Airstream. Here's the deal. Getting your car to where it's comfortable to sleep in is actually not nearly as difficult as you might think. Get the right sleeping pads, the right sleeping bags, and the right pillows, and you're good to go. We did a road trip out west last year, drove from Tennessee out to Colorado, around a bunch of stuff, and then drove back. We stayed in Walmarts the whole time. It's free, and you can typically find a Walmart near a truck stop like Pilot and pay for a $10 nice, hot, clean shower the next morning. See, when we're traveling on the road, most of the time we would be pulling into a hotel at like 10 p.m. and then getting up the next day at like 8 a.m. and leaving. You're literally paying $100 or more for a place to sleep and a shower. I'd rather pay 10 bucks for a nice hot shower at Pilot or Flying J and have the other $90 to buy something that I actually want, even if the car isn't quite as comfortable. But I'll do me, you do you. I didn't say all 13 of these things are for everybody. Speaking of 13, that brings me to the last one I wanna talk about, which is American Eagle jeans. For the longest time, starting in high school, I was convinced that no other jeans on the face of the planet could fit me except for American Eagle. They were the best, they were everything, they were the only ones I would wear, everything else was inferior. Well, as you probably are thinking to yourself right now, that's pretty stupid. But I wore American Eagle jeans religiously for years, even though they're quite expensive and I'm pretty hard on clothes. Finally, a few years ago, Hannah convinced me to start shopping with her at TJ Maxx, and what a surprise. I found jeans that fit me a lot of times better than the ones at American Eagle for half the price. I guess the moral of the story here is don't ever get so set in your ways that you only buy one specific thing from one specific place. All right, so that's it, guys. Please leave a comment down below and tell me what's one thing that you've cut from your budget that you don't miss at all. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel for more videos about how to get ahead with your money. And remember, I can teach you how to cut stuff out of your budget, but I can't make you do it. The choice is yours. I'll see y'all next week.